Eva Maria Balmer, hello, good morning. Hi Virginie, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you for joining us. You're the vice president for the executive vice chairman of MasterCard. Mm -hmm. And we're very happy to have you and discuss the efforts of MasterCard with regard to sustainability, uh, inclusiveness, and of course, public value. And my first question to you, Eva, if you allow me to start right there, is what does public value mean to you as a citizen? Okay. So first of all, thanks for having me. I'm really excited uh, to be speaking to you. Thank you so much. And um, to answer your question, Virginia, I think public value means that for me personally, corporates, the private and the public sector work together to bring back value to citizen and its society in the way how they conduct business. Well, that's um, short and nice. And why do you think that value is so needed in business today? Because I think that the business and the corporates have a responsibility not only towards its shareholders, but to the broader community that they serve. And this includes the society, right? So I, I believe that right now, when you look at the, the public or when you look at the private sector in particular, the way how we are measured is uh, from a financial perspective, right? So we, we do our financial, um, uh, you know, the financial books at the end of the, the year, and it's, it's very important that that we deliver value to the shareholders, which is absolutely correct. But I do think that society, and not only society, but also the people working in corporates, they want to give back. They want to make sure that what they do has a positive impact on society. And it's not only a millennial thing. So I know that, you know, with, with the generation of millennials, a lot of people think, you know, yeah, it's, it's a big part of their day-to-day -day life that they want to do something which is purposeful and which is absolute, absolutely right. But I do think there should be and there has been a push for corporates and the private sector to not only look at the way how they um, create value for the shareholders, but also how they impact its workforce, how they impact the society that they deliver the, 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 the products and, and solutions for, and also the environment. And you know, you have, um, you have institutions like uh, United Nations, uh, UN Global Compact, who really want to work with um, the private sector to make sure that whatever the operations are, that they deliver value back to society. And, and, and to be honest, I mean, if you want to have a sustainable business, you need to think long term, right? And the way how you think long term, you need to think about how do I impact people around me from a long term perspective. So that's why you need to make long term decisions. That's really interesting. You have in uh, the way you present it altogether the long term perspective yeah. and therefore remaining sustainable and profitable as a, as a corporation, yeah. as well as being accountable to society. You didn't even pronounce the word customer. Do you think that this concept of accountability has evolved in the recent years? Yeah, I do think that, um, yeah, I do think that there is a, a a push and a movement towards looking at how can corporates, how can institutions be not only held accountable, but also what they do for its citizens, right, and for society. So when you look at that, and I can give you a bit of background and, uh, into the journey that MasterCard has um, has been on. So wh when we when we IPO'd, for example, in 2006, right, um, when we IPO'd, we, we took 10% of our stock right? And we put it in our MasterCard Foundation. And because our stock has done, has done pretty well over the last few years, that the value of the MasterCard Foundation has grown accordingly, right? So MasterCard Fund, the MasterCard Foundation is now worth approximately 20 billion or a bit over 20 billion, which makes it one of the largest foundations in the world. And I really do like that concept. I do like that concept that you think, okay, we have the business and what can we do with the value of our business? How can, what, what value can we create? Right, and, and this was back in, 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 in 2006, but we have done much more than that. So yes, we have 
this this foundation but then also we wanted to to have within our business within the business we created a a team which is the mastercard center for inclusive growth led by a fabulous woman shamina thing she is uh, she's really a role model in that space and and that team is looking at what can we do from a social impact pers uh, impact perspective right what can we do to help not only um not only society but also other institutions that serve so the society right so we do have that arm as well and then more and more our business pivoted towards okay so we have the mastercard business but because we are a network and we benefit from flow that goes over our network so the more people are included the better it is for our business what can we actually do and then our ceo in 2015 he committed publicly that we want to include 500 million excluded people by 2020 so it's part of our strategy right this drive and bringing people in, in the financial ecosystem yes it works with our business model yes it is part of our business but it is good for society, right? And that is why we are on this uh, doing well by doing good. It's not only a tagline, it's something we really believe in. And it is driven by the board of directors and by the CEO. And I do think this is an important part. I, I, I firmly believe that it's absolutely important that um, the leaders in this world step up become role models and advocate for it and say yes we want to do this and our our business is this is this is part of our values of our business values so I, i'm really excited to work with this company for mastercard because it is it is business but it is linked and and supported with values that i i I'm, I'm really excited about and i think it's the right thing to do so it's not only the right thing to do but it's also good for society and for the business. I think we hear very much your enthusiasm uh, and uh, it, it's great to hear that. But you mentioned the tone from the top and the importance of uh, leaders, including in the corporate world, maybe particularly in the corporate world. Do you think that the fact that your CEO was educated in India comes from uh, this part of the world uh, has to do with his behavior? Oh, I, 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 that's a great question, Virginia. I think absolutely. I think he is, he is a, a very open-minded and he has a very inclusive mindset. And this cascades down through the organization. I mean, when you look at, look at the way how, how he talks and how he wants the organization move forward, you, you have to have a very strong voice. You have to have a strong presence. You have to, to inspire people to, to, to drive that change, right? So yes, I do believe that. And it, and, and it, it really cascades down uh, from the top through the organization, right? So, so diversity and inclusion is a firm part of our business. I mean, we, we do have it as, as, as a layer of within our strategy, right? It's important that we look at our workforce. How how do we how do, how how does our workforce com comprise of, right? What do we have enough women? Do we have men? Do we have like how diverse is our workforce? Very important for us to answer that question and to work on that. But not only it it, it also comes through through the way how we serve our customers right so i give you an example we have our day-to-day -day business but then also because of the goal that we publicly announced to bring in 500 million people we wanted to make sure that we develop products and services that are geared to to these customers right so we we set up for example in nairobi in kenya the mastercard labs for financial inclusion right because we thought okay you, you have to be you have to be on the ground you have to understand what are the needs of these people so that we can serve them properly right and this is why why we set up um the labs for for financial inclusion and some terrific products have come out of the lab so we we 
we know that farmers are the backbone of the society, especially in developing countries. So, so we came up with a solution where we can connect farmers to buyers so that, you know, we make sure that they can sell products via a, a mobile device. And, and this is just one example. How can we make sure that uh, parents can send their kids to school by allowing them to, to pay for for tuition fields in small in or in, in small installments, right? So this is another example of what we do. And and I do think that it's not only because it's driven from the top with diversity inclusion, the values of sustainability are driven from the top, but it comes through in the way how we how we work internally, how we how we look at how to recruit and retain our workforce and our talent, but also how we serve our customers and consumers. You know, what sounds really uh, fascinating listening to you is that few years ago, I'm not talking specifically about MasterCard, but few years ago, we would have heard how great the activities of the CSR department are was you talking about the corporate strategy of uh, MasterCard. When did that, when did that fusion happen? Mm. I think it's a great question and I think it's an evolution, right? So, so when I said earlier, we started in 2006 where we put stock into our foundation. I think that, that was, that was the beginning, right? That, that was one big um, commitment from our side, but then throughout the years it evolved from a, if you want to call it CSR initiative to become a firm part of the, of, of the corporate strategy of our strategy. And I don't know if there is an exact date where I can pinpoint and say, this is when it became part of our strategy. It's now part of our values. It's part of who we are and what we do. But I do think it's a journey. And I do think it's important because along the journey you learn, this is what makes sense, this is why we are doing it, and this is how we are doing it, right? So um, I, I don't think there is an exact date or time where, where you know, it became part, but it, it rather evolved because we, are, we started to understand that doing well by doing good, yes, we, we very much have a business focus and it is important, but it's also important how you do it and who you want to benefit and who you serve, right? So it's, it's this drive of, yes, we do, it, it's business, but we want to conduct business in a sustainable way and the, the, the word decency, I mean decency is something that resonates very well with our culture. This is very important, right? But I don't think there was an exact date or time. It's more like a journey. But today it is in the corporate strategy. Yes. So you tend to report uh, a bit as a, with a triple bottom line, yes? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the, the sustainable development goals, for example, the SDGs, that is something that is intrinsically part of how we, um, how we, you know, report or how we want to conduct business. I mean, we have a team here at MasterCard led again by a really brilliant woman, Christina Klopodans. Um, it's our sustainability team, right, that looks at how do we do business, what do we do, and how do we impact society and envir the environment. And they look at it and they, they, they make sure that we report on it. I mean, you have seen our sustainability report and it's becoming more and more and more really ingrained in our strategy that this is something we really care and we really want to show this is what we do because it's not again it's going back to this idea that it's good for business when you show the external world how you conduct business you also attract investors you attract attract people to work for this company it's very important yes it is um but to maintain this sustainability and to continue to be um, a leading force in business, uh, one also needs uh, the proper um, performance indicators that are going to be shared. And we uh, face a, a challenge with measurement, particularly when it comes to social affairs. Um, it's not that easy to share a, a, to share a way or a measurement. 
What is uh, MasterCard position here? I think it comes through in, in different ways, right? So when you look at, um, and I'll take an example with climate, for example, right? Climate change, I think there's a strong push that um, we obviously have to deal with that issue. And institutions will come out with a pledge that we are committed to keep, for example, global warming at 1.5 degrees, right? And I do think that for the corporate world, there will be hopefully in the future indicators where you say this is how you how you create social impact this is how you how you will be measured so for us for example we committed to the goal that we bring in 500 million excluded people so we are tracking that and we want to make sure that we hit that goal by 2020 and by the way we are on track on doing that yeah. but this is something where we have where we are holding ourselves accountable for that. Yes, we have said we're going to do this. So let's do it. And let's, let's look at how we are doing and how we are progressing on this. And you can find this in our annual report, right? So this is one measure how we are doing it, but it, it has to work for the business. It has to, it has to work for the business. It has to be part of the business. But do you co cooperate with regulators, for example? Regulators, very important topic, something you have to do, I, I believe, I personally think it should be a partnership. So this partnership angle is something where I really believe in. I think that the public and private sector need to work together. So and sometimes, you know what happens, sometimes it's the private sector pushing, right? The private sector sometimes is, is the agile part and they are pushing for change and then the regulation comes in. And I do think it is a partnership approach that is needed. And I think it, we need to dial that up. So what I mean is I think more and more corporates need to come in, more and more corporates need to step up and say, yes, we want to, we want to drive change and when there is a really a strong push from the private side I'm, I'm very certain that you know regulation will come in and and, and the public sector will want to work and they want to work with the private sector right so again it's 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 a partnership uh, driven approach that uh, I hope and I really want more corporates to come in and and commit do you meet them? Do you encourage them? Do you have a special advocacy? Absolutely. I mean, co uh, co companies or, or, or uh, initiatives like yourself, yeah, right, um, is something that we engage with. We are part, we are members of, of some of the great institutions that really want to drive public and private partnerships. It's part of our DNA. Again, we are a network. It's part of our business that we connect. We connect with the government. We connect with with banks, merchants, it's part of our, who we are and what we need to do in order to be sustainable for the long term. So we, yes, we definitely want to connect with the public sector. And we also are part, I mean, we are part of UN Global Compact, for example, a, a brilliant institution that really wants to drive the, the public private engagement and partnership. And I do think that it's important to work with such institutions that, that act as a thought leader, that act as a connector, that act as, a, as an advocate. So um, I, I hope we will see more and more of that. Eva, I want to thank you deeply for, for your time. I know you're extremely busy and it was fantastic to have you with us today and uh, listening to your thoughts about public value. Um, thank you. We will post the sustainability report as well so our visitors can freely check uh, what uh, you've done. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you.